Listen, man. Oh, this is a million dollars worth of game show. I'm Wallow267. This is Gilly the Nut. You know what I mean? Everybody know you as that, right? That's your new name. No, they know you as Baltimore Low because you're not from Philly no more. You live in Baltimore, nigga. But that's a whole different story. Hey, April, can a nigga come out and play sometimes? And, and by him saying, April, we, you know, we want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Diva Glam. You know what I mean? Everything Glam. Listen, man. EverythingGlam.com, man. Have you had any good hair lately? Once again, we're still working on them two pace. Like, no, they ain't called two pace. What they call like them pieces, them units. Mm -hmm. What type of unit are you gonna get? Like a box, like a box joint with the little dye in it, the kid and play that'll be you. What no, you think? You, you know what you, you your joint, you should get the the low top hustler with the Mike Tyson part. That fits you low. No, you know, I think I really I'm really fascinated with the wave thing. You know, ever since my brains got blew out, you know. I had a uh, convertible. Is it haven't like it's a little? It's yeah, little. he lost his hair early. He got the drop top. With no, the no, 10 I was twenty seven. I was twenty seven. Nigga, you got the drop top with the ten on the sides at seventeen. <laughs> I ain't got a drop top. Do I, I got a drop top? Yeah, with the, <laughs> yeah, drop top with the ten on the sides. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I, I don't got a. I don't. I didn't shave today. <laughs> oh, you're gonna look a wild. See, I ain't afraid. See, you afraid. You're afraid. Listen, my joint, I don't, I don't really care about that. You see what I'm saying? But my whole thing is. You take a razor to your pup. Though. My whole thing is, no. If I took a razor to my head, uh, my shit, I had a Nestle Crunch pup. Yeah, I love the razor. But once again, uh, you my know, shout out. My shit bump up like a Nestle Crunch, I take it. I already know. Once Lord again. Oh, mercy. Once again, shout out to our sponsor, Everything Diva Glam. And I haven't had any good hair lately. None at all. I haven't had hair in 20 plus. Any good hair. Like, my hair just come when it come, it just be wild, it be poking me, it be hurting, and growing, all the other stuff. I also want to give out a shout out to our other sponsor, Real Estate Money Club. My man, Mark Flip Houses, man. You get with him, man. You trying to get into the real estate game, you ain't got no paper. You trying to get in, I'm telling you, this guy can help you. Mark Flip Houses, realestatemoneyclub.com. Check him out. But we're going to tap right in, man. Right. Like, I don't, I don't even want to play, man. I, you know, I want to get into, as we going into this million dollars worth of game, I just want to say something like, somebody mention your name. Somebody mention my name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gilly the, I call you Gilly the Nut. I don't I don't know what they call you, but somebody just mention your name. Who? In the state of hip-hop. In hip-hop, I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. Somebody who, what you play for Temple now? What you, Al? Talking about who? Somebody in the state of hip-hop mentioned my name? They mentioned your name. They they wouldn't dare mention they my mention name. your name. Who mentioned my name? I don't do no telling, so I don't know. You oh, probably know. Okay. I don't. That's not telling, Lo. Listen, the one thing you got to stop doing. You got to stop. Sometimes I can get into my jail, man. You can't. Please Why? leave the Why? jail shit alone. Why? You're not telling. You're not on the stand by telling me somebody who mentioned my name was it in a rap? Maybe. Was it Kodak Whack? Wow. Wow. I'm not. I'm not going. Listen, I'm gonna say this. We <laughs> wow. gonna get, we, 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 we gonna touch this now. Kodak Black. Mm -hmm. He uh. He spoke out a line about rest in peace and Nipsey. He spoke out a line about to Lauren London and all that stuff, uh, which you know, which I feel that was out of pocket, like a pistol in a robbery. I think uh, what it is, the reason I believe that he's coming out the way he's coming because he's a young cat. He feel attacked, mm -hmm. and a lot of times when we making money, one thing about this, you got to listen when you up. Mm -hmm. See, us in the community where we come from, we don't listen. As soon as we get money. Um, we we don't want to hear nothing from nobody. Nobody can check us. Mm. That's why a lot of times a lot of these dudes that be having these teams, they be having these entourages, they could be in better position and a lot of things won't come their way dealing with the criminal, the law enforcement and all that won't come their way if they have people around they can check them. Right. See, I keep checking around. <coughs> if I'm out of pocket, you won't call me your cuz. What the f you doing? If you out of pocket, I'm going to call you your cuz. Right. What you doing? But, because but the money, the money, hold up, the money block checkers, meaning when you start getting money, look at all the crews in hip hop. Look at all the crews. Majority of these dudes got yes men around them mm -hmm. because they scared to say something because they don't want to be they don't want to uh, be cut from the crew and not be around. So dudes has got a bunch of yes men around them that don't check them. Kodak back when he said he was out of pocket, and I and I don't know his team, but obviously he ain't had the right people around to say, listen, man, youngin, we not doing that. Right. Or homie, you my homie. That ain't cool to say, bro. Right. That ain't cool. But now you say it and get out there, people you know other people that's, that's outside is just. That's brown with Nipsey. Check you about it. Right. If you go at somebody immediately, they're gonna get defensive. If you ain't got nobody around, you telling no, you was out of pocket, homie. Right. Like I think the best way you could do it about that, get on here, man. Tell you know what I mean, boom, boom, boom. But do it in a sincere way. Right. A lot of people, you know, he, he, he apologized. A lot of people don't see it as sincere, or whatever. But like, a lot of times when I see a young boy do some goofy shit, because I was young boy and I did goofy shit, mm -hmm. and when I did something goofy and I was out of my neighborhood, I did some goofy, whatever I did. The old heads from that neighborhood go to holler at my old heads.
because you got to blame the old heads or the people that you're supposed to be around that supposed to be, you know, giving you game or whoever whoever puts you on the set or whoever, what's the name, puts you in position, them the people that's responsible for you. You know what I mean? So it's like a lot of times these dudes ain't got no old heads. But see, a lot of times to be able to take a check-in, you got to be real with yourself. You feel what I'm saying? So if you ain't real with yourself, when a motherfucker brings something to your attention about, no, we don't do that. We don't, we don't act like that. We don't, we don't go about situations like that. If you ain't real with yourself, you're not going to be able to take the check in. And then you give a nigga like that some money on top of that. Now, now a nigga ego really through the roof. Nigga can't tell him nothing. Because in actuality, everything that me and T.I. or whoever said to Kodak Black was the God honest truth. You don't disrespect no nigga like that. That's that just went to the grave, man. You don't even speak on his wife. You don't even speak on nothing that has anything to do with that. Mm -hmm. So for you to get checked, and, and and nobody's too young, nobody's too old to be checked. Checking is just a form of correcting. That's just a form of saying, no, oh, dog, we don't do that, man. If you can't look yourself in the mirror when you wrong and and, and look, because at the end of the day, you got to look yourself in the eyes. If you can't look yourself and say, man, I was wrong, I was out of pocket, man, let, let me check myself, then you a whole whole ass nigga. So, so what Kodak Black ain't, what he doing and how he acting ain't got nothing to do with me. You just proving that you a whole whole ass nigga out here. I'm going to say, I'm a, up now, there's a flip side to what you're saying, and I'm going to say this. If you Kodak Black people's, or if Kodak Black, if you even watching this, I'm going to say something to you, young blood. Let me explain something to you. You got in the rap game to make it out of a struggle. Right. Now, the rap game, it, it creates opportunities. It, it brings finances that could put you and your family in a better position. What we got to understand, Kodak, is this. I don't know how, but I think you should make it right. The best way possible. I know you probably feel I apologize. Fuck everybody because you're young and you high-headed. And a lot of times, you'll say to yourself, like, Man, fuck that. I ain't trying to hear nothing. Fuck them niggas. It's whatever. Right. It's war. But you got to understand this. Youngin, be smart about this because you outnumber. There's a bunch of people out there that love Nipsey. There's a bunch of people out there that just looking to gain the strike. There's a bunch of people out there that love dumb shit. And they don't have nothing to lose if they see you on tour. It could be in Chicago. It could be in New York. It could be in Philly. It could be anywhere to take a shot at you. Right. And it's like... Is this worth losing your life for? Not just losing your life, getting bodily harmed. Because you got dudes out here, they not playing no fucking games. Like right. dudes ain't like like it, it could be cool. Like a lot of these, a lot of dudes is doing like you know they doing a rap thing. Anybody that's real smart, that's really from the street, they know that that's social media and all that. That street niggas don't operate on that. Right. They operate when they see you, and when they see you, a lot of times they it, they ain't gonna be transparent when they coming. So you ain't gonna see them coming. So I just think that I hope, and it, and, it, and it's sad, man. It's sad, but I just hope you can straighten out this thing the best way you can because it's like, bro, little bro, it ain't even, it ain't even like, like this shit is serious. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, that, you know, and that's my message to Kodak. And, 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 and my message to him is, you know, you gotta understand when you out here and you running your mouth and you starting beefs and you don't just put you in harm's way. Everybody, man. You put all them niggas that's with you on tour, you put all them in harm's way. You put your security in harm's way. Let me tell you something about security, niggas. Them niggas, 85% of them niggas ain't nothing but a big jelly crimpet, man. I'm just keeping it real with you because let's be for real. Them niggas was big in the first grade. Them niggas was 5'11 in the first. Who was fucking with them? Niggas ain't never been through nothing ever in their life. Nigga just big. That's it. When that hot shit start flying, guess who the easiest to hit? That big ass tree that's with you. Them two, three trees, the oak trees that you're walking around with. So guess where they gonna be the first ones to be at? Up under a fucking car, lifting up a Honda, trying to get the fuck out the way. So you gotta be mindful that when you out here and you start in trouble and you telling niggas fuck you and you you and you gotta go to nigga city. I'm here right now. You're not just putting your life in danger. The whole team. You putting the whole team in danger. Now, if something happened, 
God forbid, somebody, something happened to somebody. Now you got their mamas, everybody in their family mad at you because he didn't get, something didn't happen to him because of him. It happened because of you. Because the shit you said. So be mindful of that. Because you can always, it's easy to take the young dumb route. Oh, I don't give a fuck about them niggas. Fuck them niggas. I, I, I'm a rider. Till you show up in Philadelphia and a nigga pop up on you. Salika! <laughs> yeah. To a nigga pop up in Chicago and a nigga pop up on you. Because let me tell you something. All that tough shit, that shit go out the window when you're on another nigga's land. You can't be but so tough when you're on another nigga's land, another nigga's territory. That's when you got to start using your smarts. Because you be too tough when you're on another nigga's territory. Guess where you end up at? So smarten up, youngin. Because at the end of the day, I ain't here to pick on you. I'm not here to... to I'm actually proud of the young nigga that come from the ghetto was able to make it out and make ways for his family to eat and provide for him and his peoples and his brothers and whoever to be successful. But you also got to understand, too, you got to stand what you do out here. That's, that, that's where I come from. I come from a lane where you stand what you do. And if, and if you fuck up, then you acknowledge that you fucked up. See, the hardest thing in life to do is to say players fuck up, too. Accept responsibility. Niggas hate to accept responsibility. But we're going to hold you accountable for it. R.I.P. to Nipsey, man. To that young and cold, that black, man. Smarten up, man. You disrespecting me on the song. That shit don't mean nothing to me, man. Because the bottom line is I got a 19-year-old son that if I put you and him in the room together, he would beat the dog shit out you. And that's on everything I love. I'm going to say this, man. He would beat the dog shit out you. I don't want to hear, yeah, he grew up boxing. And if I put you and my youngest son in a room together, mano y mano, he would beat diarrhea shit down your leg. And that's my youngest son. So the bottom line, you rapping on it, you know, that shit sound good, man. That shit sound like Spanish to me. Arriba. Shit sound like something you should salsa to, nigga. Smarten up, young man. I will say this, man. That was Million Dollars Worth of Game, but we ready to get into some Million Dollars Worth of Game, man. Right. This is a segment that we always bring it to you. I know the show is called Million Dollars Worth of Game, but we got to give you this special segment, and this is how it go, Gil. We need you to answer this question. You know they always coming to you. Okay. You invented Million Dollars Worth of Game, and you yes. know what's so spectacular about what you did? You created a movement of people giving out game on the internet. Right. Like, when did you start Million Dollars Worth of Game? About seven years ago. Wow. You seeing it all over. So I'm going to get right into this. Hi, right, Gilly. I need some clarity on the situation. Oh, no, no, this is a girl. Hi, Gilly. Hi, Gilly. I need some clarity on the situation. <laughs> Say, like, no. Hi, Gilly. I need some clarity on the situation. I've been with this dude for almost a year now. We are good. We love each other and have very healthy sex life. I have noticed when I'm asleep, this man has been having sex with me. If I move or open my eyes, he stop immediately and act like he's asleep. I caught him like four times doing this already. Am I worrying how many other times he's done this without me knowing? I don't know what to make of this and haven't approached him about it yet. What do you think? I really cannot understand it because we've been getting it in. So it's not like he can't have it when he wants. Please help me because I don't know what to think. Wow. So, oh, oh. everybody slide in, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? When don't people do that like on a normal? What? Slide in. Slide into the cakes while they woman sleep. Slide and sleep. <laughs> well, I, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know about you, but if I slid into my woman, I'm is uh, she's not gonna. I'm not gonna be having <laughs> sex, and she don't know. As soon as this dick, <laughs> goddamn, cracked the oven door, it's a deep breath. <gasps> It's a goddamn Whitney Houston waiting till exhale. And uh, hey. you know what I'm saying? So yeah. uh, I don't know what type of piece he working with that he oh, having. Oh, you a piece measure? I'm, I'm not a piece but measure, just, but what just, I'm just you saying. You just spoke on that man piece. I'm not speaking on the piece. I'm just saying I don't know what he working with that that he could be we having need you, we need sex you, we with need his woman and she not deal. know. Well, Home Depot, they got measuring companies. Probably get you a measuring. 
Come on, you, I'm saying, not on duty. Because <laughs> you just mentioned the dude piece. But that's another story. No. But go ahead. What I'm mentioning is that I don't understand how she said he be having sex with sleep. her and she sleep. She will catch him. He'll wake up, pull out. Just imagine he's sliding in. How you just be hit? Ooh, ooh, this thing. Ooh, this thing wet. So she like that's some wild, creepy stuff. That's some that's some low key. Is that rape? That might be. Is that, it's not. It's not consensual. Is it? Is that consensual if you uh, sleep? That's sexual assault, definitely. Well, you got a lot of them because you said you didn't done it. Before. But, yeah, but no, but it's different because soon as I crack the oven door, two wakes up. Like but, I, but still, I'm gonna keep still, it all the way real. But, but, I done, but still, I'm gonna keep it all the way real. I done sleep. woke two up with a with a with a dick slap to the face. But listen, if she sleep, if she sleep, right, and you do that, is that a takedown? Well, I done been I, I done been with two longer than 20, now, now, hold on. 20 years. What if she do this, LeBeau? It don't matter. So, now, let me no, ask it you do question. matter. Let me ask you a question. Once you let pass the 10 year mark, that if, pussy is if, yours. It's no if, longer if hers. If you take her out, that's if, ours. Listen, listen, if you take her out, if you take her out, get her sauce down, because I done been around you plenty of times. Go ahead, drink some more. Have it, give it a whole bar. Go ahead, give her everything. Give her that sex on the beach. Right. And that other drink called uh, Butt Naked. Give her that one. That's the new one. And give it a crazy motherfucker. I told you, you got, she got loaded up in drunks, and then next thing you know, she go home, she's passed out, and you crack open the door. Is we talking about uh, Gil Cosby? Like, no. what's going on? No, no. We talking about, that's my wife. Let me tell you something. When you've been, when you been with, with, with your woman for, you know, a certain amount of time is like me. That that vagina is not hers no more. That vagina is ours. That singular turns to a plural. You feel me? Her vagina is is the cable box, and my dick is the remote. I turn that motherfucker on whenever right, I now, want now, to. All right, now, now, what happened? All right, now, table's turn, right? What? You sleep, right? Uh, I've been sleeping a bunch of times. Woke whoa, whoa, up no, with no. the goddamn no, 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 the goddamn no, 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 piece no, no, in the no, holster. But but, 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 but <laughs> what if you sleep, right? And one day she might be had a little couple drinks. It might be. She had a crop. She had a see a, a, a CM crazy motherfucker. You know that's a drink. She had that, or she had the the, the sex on the beach, or butt naked, or slippery when wet. And she uh, you sleep, and she give you the credit card swipe. How you gonna feel? Is that oh, a no, violation? No, 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 no. First of all, she licked your buns. Is that a violation? First, first of all, let me tell you something, nigga. That's a flag on the play. A fucking personal foul, fifteen yard penalty. Well, then, you get fucking ejected for that. Well, what then, are you, you talking think, about? You just think you could just. Do what you want to do? But, like you some type of hot shot? Well, let me tell you something. But because to know that uh, my kids' aches is off limits. You hear me? It's off lizard. That's uh, how uh, I said it. Kids' aches off kids lizard. Is, my kids, I call <laughs> my kids' aches is ill uh, on lizard. <laughs> You hear me? So that's just a that's just you know my woman know me after twenty years. You got to know your partner. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. She know that you know my motherfucking cakes is, is is totally off limit. That's just not something I'm into. All right, now how you how do you, but what do you have to say? Now, now I know my, my I know with you in April your cakes is always on limits. You know what I'm no, saying? No, not you, gonna say that. You know what I mean? April told me. No, she ain't never tell you she, shit she, like that. God, she said she ain't never tell you she said like you love them, she said you love for her to lick your brownies, bro. <laughs> she ain't never tell you no shit yeah, like she that. She did. I'm just you keeping lying. it real. You lie. I'm keeping it real. You lying, man. This boy she said lying you, on me. She said you love for her to eat your commissary. I'm just saying. You always lying, bro. I'm just telling you what she said, brother. So, you <laughs> know, but for me and two. <laughs> oh yeah, my god. For me and two, man, that's just that's just not a thing that I'm into. All right, well, but but. How do you help her? How do you help this person, man? This oh, you know, I gotta tell her that she, you know, she got a, she got a, she got a freaky puma. She living with a freaky puma. You hear me? That nigga, he, you know, he he fighting his own demons anytime, because it's not the fact that he having sex while you sleep. It's the fact that he go up in you while you sleep, and then when you acknowledge it, he stops. That's what make it some freaky, weird, kinky shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. you know, he's yes. supposed to wake up. And then when she wake up, he's supposed to say, yeah, I was waiting for you to wake up. Come here. Yeah, come to, here. She but wake no, up. He act like he, he sleep. Like, he, he want sleep. dead vagina. He, like, he go to sleep. He want the vagina when it's dead. Or he, go, uh, <laughs> he go to sleep. King Fest 2019. <laughs> he just go right under. So, for me, that's just some kinky shit. He on some, but you know, everybody's different. That's what make the world go around low. You know, back in the day, all the chicks yeah. used to call you kinky low. No, they didn't. You yes, lying. they did. See, see, yes, they lying. did. I introduced you, you to a chick. They said, you didn't want no yams. Let me tell you what they said. Back in the day, 
Wallow never wanted no yams, right? He wanted the chick to get naked and lay on the bed, and he look at her and jerk off. <laughs> you like, lie. What, what did he you're get lying. out of that? You lying? Like, because I had all what, the tapes. I didn't what, need to do look at. What, I had all he, the porn tapes back then. Everybody in the neighborhood knew I had all the porn tapes. Right. The VHS. But hold on, but I didn't have to do that. But hold on. Why would I do this that? Nigga, okay. I was waiting for the moment. And, 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 and let me just remind you all that porn back then was not accepted and looked upon like porn is now. So this nigga really used to go buy, oh, he was a kid buying old ass VCR, VH1, yeah, Betamax tapes yep, of I was porn. a legend. When they had the bush, when they had the afros on the coochie and all that, I was a legend. That was the wave. Listen, let me explain something to you. Like I say this, you try to take my virginity from me, but you know what I mean? We're not going to talk about that. And I'm saying it in the way you trying to say I didn't. I didn't lose my He said he lost his he lost his virginity to a hand job. That's, that's, Is that possible? That's possible. That's possible. Hold up, hold up. Listen, listen, listen. When me and her kissing, and she was giving me an HJ, see, they they're underrated. A lot of HJ, because everybody was hell, all hype over the BJs, the blowjob, but the HJs was underrated. And when she hooked me up, she kissed me, she kissed me. I'm like, oh my God. This is... And she cracked it, cracked my jeans so hold over. On. Okay, let me ask you a question. Is you the type of nigga close your eyes and meet a bitch halfway when you kiss? Like, no, no, I wasn't doing that. But but when she like you, you do that. Type no, no, of shit? but but this day when I lost my virginity, and, and she cracked. As soon as she cracked that first belt, I meant the first. She cracked the belt. You know, I go through. And she pulled the joint off, pulled it through, and then she cracked that first button. <laughs> I'm gonna show you exactly how it went. I was like, <laughs> oh my god, yes. <laughs> and it just next day, you know, it was like. On some real stuff, she just, she just, you know, was hit me off, and I so was like, "So what? You gave her a handful of toast of screwed icing?" No, when she just hit me off, I just was like, "Oh my god, I'm about to pop!" Ah, <laughs> ah, boom! And, I, and my life changed after that. I was a man. And you, wait, so you felt as though you wasn't a virgin? Children, don't try this. Anybody listening to this other age, don't try this at home. No, so I wasn't. No, but I was. I was on the set. I told my yeah, 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 yeah. I made a move last night. I told my homies, yeah, I came up. Yeah, I'm in the game. Touchdown. Y'all still playing games out here, man. <laughs> you guys still playing games, right? Be a so, man. So, 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 so. And that's when I started using. Cologne. So you lost after your that, virginity to that, an HJ. I went to my uncle's crib, man, because my uncle he used to give me all the porn tapes back in the day. I went to his crib and said, "Uncle, I need some to use some of that cologne." He said, "It happened." I said, "Yeah, I'm a man now." So you was using the <laughs> the old spice. <laughs> no, no, I went and got no, no, I went and got that shit. Stetson, <laughs> uncle wore Stetson. Your yeah, uncle was another ass nigga. No, he was a legend. What well, uncle was Stetson? Uncle Which Tommy. One? Cousin Tommy. Tommy. Yeah. He bought he bought Stetson. So I went there, got that. He gave me some extra tapes. He was like, yeah, you can. Here, go ahead. Give some more. You, you deserved it. So I'm looking at dudes. I'm around the way like, <laughs> you dudes still running around playing games, man. Y'all playing out here. So you felt, like, so, like, so, so like, you felt special you, about that hand job. What? That was the HJ. That was everything. So you got to code that HJ because people, you don't want to put people on it. How did, like, and how old was you? I forget. I don't want to put my age out there. Because you was 19? <laughs> I was in jail when I was 19. <laughs> Jay, come on with that, man. <laughs> I think it was 19 when he got his first HJ. <laughs> so I'm how old was you? I'm not putting it out there. I'm come just saying. But you, you, so we live our, this is a. Uh, 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 we live in our truth. I understand truth. it. I was how young. Old? I forget how old I was, but I, I was 15? No, 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 no. It was earlier than that. I was a man before that. You was 14? Nah, it was earlier than that, probably. You wasn't was a 10, bitch. You was <laughs> like saying, 13, right, listen, 14. Listen, when I, the first time I popped, I was just a legend. I just knew. Okay, so when was the first time you got some yabba dabbas? I don't even know. I don't I don't really know. You don't remember the first time you had sex? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember it was in the basement. And, uh, I thought that I, nanny crib? Listen, you know what was crazy about it? I thought I pissed on myself. I didn't even know what was happening. I'm like, oh, I gotta take a leak. Ugh. I thought I really thought I pissed on myself. Hold on, so you, so you pissed in the vagina, bro? No, no, I actually, I, I ejaculated. I uh, came, I popped, and uh, I didn't know I was popping because it felt different from the HJ. But I was like, oh my god, <laughs> I'm taking it. I'm like she's gonna be mad at me. And then I pulled out. I had to count him. I'm like, oh, okay. You ain't no condom on back then, nigga. You lying. He listen, lying like a motherfucker. You ain't no condom on back then. Or everything I love. Or everything I love. Doug, you lying. Listen, let me just say this. I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to be real. I you want sushi, listen, listen, nigga. Listen, straight listen, raw, I was a, nigga. I was a, I was Fuck is wrong. Listen, I was a dude. You want sushi listen, for the coochie. No, no, listen. listen. I ain't going to That's back when we used to call it I'll be coochie. Straight I'll be straight you want with sushi you. of the coochie. I'll be straight up with you. I was the type of guy that used to get condoms. You just put them on and look at it like, yeah, I'm ready. Have them in my pocket. Like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm waiting for the day. 
It just put them off, look in the mirror, like, yeah. So who do, so who do, so you, so you used to get condoms. So, the, I so I'm, just, I'm just glad he's allowing y'all to know what type of nut ass nigga he is. So you used to get condoms and then go home and try them on like yeah. a leather jacket. Like, I'm trying to be like, yeah. <laughs> like an Adidas ready. sweatsuit, like a, run, like, like a run DMC Adidas no, sweatsuit. Like, this, but I had a bad, I had a bad incident with that one time. What? Uh, you know, it hurts you when you, you look you're young and you realize the condom baggy. <laughs> I'm like, wow. I'm like, wow. So hold on. So wait, wait, wait. I was wait. young. The condom was bagging. Like, Dang, I thought I was so this nigga was I trying condoms on that was fitting like a three X hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, I got to grow. And I told you, I told you, I told you, that's why I told you, you should come out with Magnum Minis. Oh, no, 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 no. They got to come out with a joint called uh, the Baby Leg Edition. For me. <laughs> baby Legs. Like, let me tell you something. So so you really was, so you was hitting bitches back in the day with baggy condoms? <laughs> <laughs> no, I found something that, that, you know, that gripped a little bit. That still had yeah, some air in it. Yeah, you <laughs> it was, found, I was you young. Did, you found them lifestyle puppies. I had some, <laughs> listen, the joints I found, they had, a, they had an air conditioner in them. <laughs> They had an AC there. Oh, yeah, these Jones come with it. So when I see the size, I'm like, oh, they the Jones, but they're close, but they got an AC in them. I just get them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, man, we're going to, you know, we're going we're to take something to you, you know. You know, this, this time, we not even, I don't even think we're going to have time to touch in, you know, you know, stories from the cell. No, 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 no. We touching stories from no, the cell. No, but hold up, hold up. Because, I, you know, we're going to have a guest today, and I, we got a special guest. And uh, But first, I'm going to give a shout out to a legend. Cool. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to, uh, there's a martial artist out there in the dojo somewhere. You have the glow. People might don't know you. But if you're hearing this, keep going. You're going to be a legend if you are not already one. The fuck you, man? Shut up, man. The no, fuck I'm just giving a shout out Bitch, to you can't say you want to give a shout out to a legend and then shout out nigga out the top, but you're going to be a future fucking legend. That don't fucking make sense. Man, let's give a real legend a shout out, man. Shout out to Prime Time Deion Sanders, man. Yeah, Deion's a legend. You He's know, a that's legend. a real legend, man. I, I enjoy a... this 30 for 30. It was legendary. I enjoy everything that he does as far as the kids giving back, as Y'all far did. as the football and, you know, the baseball. And... Must be the money. Gators on my face. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the money they got him so, acting that way, Deion. Out, so, when we when we take this time to shout legends shout out, out we legend. want to shout real legends out. None of these fucking jokers this dude's talking about. But listen, dog, we we got to Let's get into because we got time. Let's get into these stories from the cell, man. All right. Because th- th- I think this is one of our most important segments because this is us telling the kids what not to do, and and the reason why they don't want to go to prison, man. And that and that's a big part of what we do it for is the youth, man. So, if for the people that don't know, Wallow did twenty years in prison. He went to jail at seventeen. He came home two years ago, when he was thirty-seven years old. And this segment is called "Stories from a Cell," where he, you know, he take you know, an event or a story that happened when he was in prison, and he shares it with. Uh, you know, our listeners and our viewers, and you know, and to the youth to pretty much just let them know the things that go on behind behind the, those walls, those dark, gloomy walls. Well, 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 I'm going to talk about something that's deep. And, and this one, this this is real deep. Like stories, stories, stories from themselves is real stuff. And it's just like, you you got to, uh, <coughs> you got to, you, you know, I just want to share stuff that to, to open people's minds up to understand what's going on. Now, I had this old head named Shoes, right? He was in prison. He was in the, you know, the hospital ward. He was dying of AIDS. He told everybody he had cancer, but he let me know, listen, man, I got AIDS. Now, what I used to do, I used to be his caretaker, like, you know, take him out, go take him to the yard, go check on him and anything. He used to, you know, just rob banks, did all that. He once had a life, he once had a life bid. He overturned, he went home, came back out, got caught up again, wound up getting, like, forever in jail, like, his numbers. He told me some of the realest stuff. He said, man, I lived my whole life being somebody that I wasn't. He said, man, and, and what was deep about every time he told me, it was like he was telling, he wanted me, he wanted me to know all this stuff before he leave. Because I'm looking at it like he ain't going to never leave. And it was like shoes, shoes, he had cussed me out because, you know, they used to tell him he can't smoke no cigarettes he, because of his health condition and all that. He's like, fuck them, bring me a pack of cigarettes. I was like, no, bring me a motherfucking pack of cigarettes. You listen to me, I'm your fucking old head. So I make sure, you know what I mean? Yeah. So 
So I listen, I listen, I listen to him, bring it to him. But what was sad about it is that you see this person dying in a cell because he gave his whole life to the streets. And one day, you know, I came back early in the morning. Yo, what am I going to do? And a lady spun me. I was like, damn, where is that? Oh, yeah, they, he, he be back. She didn't want to tell me what was going on. So I came back later. They was like, yeah, he was that third. Uh, they just kept spinning me all day because I used to always come over there, bring him all type of snacks. He used to like these orange slices they used to sell on commissary. They like orange slices, soft joints. So I go, I come back with him and doing all type of stuff, bring him stuff. So I'm bringing him them. I left him right after I left him, like an hour or two later that night, the night before he died. So I was, I was just messed up because I was like, damn, he always used to tell me, man, when you get out of jail, live your life, man. He said, you know, you know, we, we, we move around. We try to do this, that, and the third, and we try to be all caught up in a, living this street life. He said, I gave my whole life to the streets, and I spent my whole life in the system. He died in AIDS in the cell. Now, I'm saying to say this. When you go to jail, you don't know if you're going to make it out. You could do a year. You could do two years. You could be doing anything. You don't never want to put yourself in a position where as though you could be taken away from your physical freedom, where as though anything could happen. They could run in your cell, spray you, mace you. you I mean, anything could happen. Health, health problems. But it's not just a, you losing your life and what you do. You got to think about all that stuff you put on your family. When you're in jail, people losing their life. That's your family members you love. You're losing friends. You're losing anything. So my message to dudes out there is like, you, you just got to be mindful, man. The worst way to die is in a cell. And the worst way, the worst place to be when, you, you know, a family member die or anything is in a cell. So just be mindful of that. And just, you know what I mean, rest in peace of shoes, man. And, and I thank you. I'm thankful for everything he gave me. And one thing he told me more than anything, he said, every day, young boy, live your motherfucking life the way you want to live it because you only got one shot. Right. And that was important. And, 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 and we ain't going to hinder, you know, we ain't going to go on with this for too long, but... Rest in peace to my cousin Steve. Yes, yes. But you know how I feel to lose your brother when you're in the cell. And you know what was crazy about that? When I, you know, my brother got killed. I'm in the cell sitting there early in the morning. I had a cell phone at this time. I was in the cell. And when I woke up in the morning, people just called me, call home, call home, call your mom, call your mom. Everybody that knew me. Nobody would tell me what was going on. So I ain't paying no attention. So I'm just like, oh. but I'm sitting on the bed. I'm in Greatest Four Prison right outside of Philly, and I'm looking at the news. And on the news, I see him on my grandma's block. I'm like, hold up, what the fuck is going on? And when I see him on the grandma, you just see the rude reporter. Yeah, 39 year old man was shot as he was going to the store to get his grandma a candy bar. I mean, and I'm like, what? So I call my grandma. I'm like, nanny. She like Wallace. I said, what happened? She said, well, Steve was going to the store, and he came. You know, he came. I heard some gunshots. He came running back in. And when he fell in the door, he, I opened the door, he fell in the door, I fell on the couch. And I, and I said, what happened? Who done this to you? He went to go speak. And life escaped. You know what I'm saying? So to be in prison and see that this is my, you know, this is my guy. You know what I'm saying? This is my brother. We grew up in the same house, same struggle, same mom. You know what I'm saying? That was that was the worst thing that ever could happen. For me, for that to happen to my family, and just had to deal with that. And then after that, I went through the phase of not escaping the reality of life. Like, damn. You know, as I'm still doing time, because, you know, he got killed in 2013. I ain't come home to 2017. So that whole time, I didn't go to the funeral because I ain't want to. So I'm saying to myself, like, I'm still thinking that damn, I get out there and see my brother. I'm I'm just totally illusional and not even looking at it until I get home and realize, damn, he ain't, it ain't it's a wrap. You know what I mean? So it was deep. It's a deep thing that you will go through. So you gotta really be mindful, man, while you out here, man, about. Ain't nothing cool about losing your freedom and be sitting in the cell, man. Ain't nothing cool about that shit. I mean, and that's my story from the cell. Absolutely. So, um, man, that's a that's that's the, I love how you break stuff down for the youth, man. That's a beautiful, beautiful way to way you break stuff down for the youth. And but let's the let's, line let's, is, let's man, speed it up a little bit. Yeah, I broke it down for the youth, but but that's important though. That's important. I, I you know. But I want to say this, man, because I don't want to be sad. I don't want to be in here crying and all this stuff. You know how I get. I get really emotional. Wife tries, man. But that's another thing. Uh, yeah. Call Thomas. But I want to ask you a question. Yeah. I got three picks. I mean, who would you be? Mm-hmm. Mr. T. Now, this you coming back to life. Okay, so if I died and came back, back you're life. saying. You only, can pick, you only can pick one of these people out of me. 
Mr. T, Razor Ramon, a bird man. Well, we know I ain't coming to fuck back as bird man. We that's just we be. Who the fuck is Razor Ramon? No, no, no. I got a better one. They wrestlers, but listen, I got something better for you. I got something better. I got something better. All right, now listen. This is better for you because you know I know you a little. Sometimes you can be a little spicy. Who would you be? Cindy Lauper, George Michael, or RuPaul? If you came back, <laughs> what? Like, you got to pick one. I got to pick one. Yeah, Cindy Lauper. I'm just throwing names. RuPaul and who? George Michael. George was a hell of a guy. I'm coming back as Cindy. Cindy Lauper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's still spicy. <laughs> I'm coming back as Cindy, like wow. because yeah, <laughs> I'm just coming back as Cindy, man. Why is that? I I mean I just don't I just don't I, I can't picture me coming back as RuPaul. I can't picture me coming back as George Michael Zila. So you, you know you know you know. Let me just say two people I come back as if I get if, if Zila too. Who? Ever, the one and only, the great one, the world class star, real class, you know, martial artist, Bruce Leroy, or Karate Earl. Uh, Karate Earl was a fucking drug addict from the hood. <laughs> who, <laughs> stop, stop slamming. Who, who knew just, how to do karate? This, 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 this called the two grip claw. If I hit you with this, it'll paralyze you for two minutes. Right, right. Yeah. Hey, come on, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Tell you, stop disrespecting <laughs> Earl, man. Listen, I'm gonna put you to sleep right. again. But I'm, I'm gonna show you I'm what's called a 38 fucking special. I ain't worried if about I that. hit you with that, it should paralyze you for life. Listen, let me tell you what's wrong, something. What's wrong with him talking about two crypto? Don't do that shit no more. I disarm though, many men. You ain't disarm nobody. I know you, nigga. You're a denim belt in real life. I dis I disarm. Now, the, the the reason the reason I'm talking about I mentioned Birdman and Mr. T is because these dudes wear a lot of jewelry. A, a whole lot. lot. A whole lot of jewelry. In the day. I had the honor to connect with my man. My man, as you always say, is not your homie. It's your my man. Homie. Absolutely. I know people. I'm not going. I'm not going to knock people because of the life they live. I had to bring back my homie, the one and only Raheem the Jeweler, due to the fact of I got a lot of requests. He was on Where's Wallo, Cappers Exposed, and what happened is I'm telling you, he got hundreds of thousands of views on a YouTube Where's Wallo two six seven YouTube. But what happened was. They started tearing my DM up. I said, Raheem, I can't deal with this. I'm calling them. Yo, why is they tearing? Uh, could you connect me with Raheem? I DM'd him. Well, His DM was overloaded. Well, Raheem is 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 more important to the culture than Puff. Oh, you know what? Let's call this episode with Raheem the jeweler the new real. The new real. This is what's real. Everybody, we would like to welcome the one and only Raheem the jeweler. Raheem, Look how you doing today, man? I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing outstanding. Make sure you're speaking into the mic. I understand you got your mask on for protections. You don't want people to know your identity. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I can. I don't want you to speak on nobody's name. I know this nut right here will try to get you to, you know, confess about who you be dealing with. As I see on the table, once again, you got the, 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 the prop money, the video money. A lot of dudes like to get this money and put it in their pockets. But the watches is outstanding, I will say. This this watch right here just uh, match, my, uh, match my hat, I think. What is that, a Richard? It's a Richard Mill. Oh, I heard about them. Like, how much should this watch cost? It's it's quite heavy. That one's about one hundred ninety thousand. This is one hundred ninety thousand. But Raheem, Raheem prices is about fourteen hundred. Oh my God! This this watch. So so, so you, this watch is quite heavy. Hold so, on. Excuse me, news flash. I just want to throw a public service announcement. I don't wear a uh, Raheem jewelry. I know this is my guy. I know people be like, oh, you probably got a Raheem. No, I don't. I don't wear the watches. Gil, I got I got Gil a Raheem the jeweler watch for his birthday. He didn't appreciate it and. Some people is ungrateful, but that's okay. So I, I want to ask Raheem, this right? Is quite nice. So you're servicing all the rappers. Right. Oh, stop saying all. He's not selling to all the rappers. Stop trying to see, see Raheem. Just, 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 just stick with me. Be mindful of his wording of how he worded things. Okay. Okay. So I don't want to lose questions. He's not servicing so, all the rappers. Oh, so seventy percent of the rappers. No, no, no. We're not saying no percentage. He's not. Servicing all rappers is seventy percent to say some rappers. Okay, so you're servicing some rappers mm -hmm. with the bootleg luxury watches, mm -hmm. some Instagram models, definitely, P football players, absolutely. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. basketball players. Oh, let me see this, this for the ladies. This yeah, the ladies love this. Get April. No, 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 I'm not. 
my baby we real stuff. But oh, excuse me. Mm. I just want to do uh if you don't mind me. Could you can I can I borrow your wrist for a minute? Mm. Yeah, the they look like twins. <laughs> they don't look like no fucking twins. <laughs> like you got an RDJ on. <laughs> RDJ, no, that's the real thing. Oh, yeah. Look at this. This is like a Raheem the Jeweler kit, guys. Put this up a little bit. Let me see. This is like Raheem the Jeweler. Nah, this yeah. looks like, look like 40 exposed. plus bands, and that Cabra, looks like... Cabra's exposed. How, how much, how, so how much do you charge for this, this luxury? This how much? This is a girl, this is a girl, John. This is that's luxury. actually a, man, a men's 36 this, millimeter. How does it men's? Look at the small of wrists. So that's a men's 36 millimeter. Like how much yeah. would you charge for that? That one goes about 1200 1200 for this bus? And the store so, is about 30000 So, So how many watches do you sell a week? Hmm. Let's see. On an average? On an average, I sell about 10 to 15 a day. So I would say probably, I'm not too good at math. I didn't do good in school, but probably like. Well, you proving you ain't got to go to fuck the school, huh? You got to sell a lot. <laughs> oh, that paper you're making. <laughs> uh, probably, probably over 200. Hold up. So this. Over 200. That's a lot. So this is video money, right? Damn, it feels funny. Does it sound real? Yeah, but 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 if you're a distance and you see it, you'll think like, yeah, it got the blue line on it. So this is prop money for videos. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you mean to tell me guys come to you like I said on, uh, you know, talked about it first. Guys coming right to you like, yo, I need some of that Raheem money. Yep. How much do you charge? Not, not, not saying they, they rent money from you and everything for video. So now you got me thinking every time I see on Instagram and I see stacks of money like this, because I be seeing a lot of people. They be having the money. They be having it, holding it. They be doing this. Now you got me looking at everybody like they they out here faking. So I sold ten thousand four hundred fifty dollars. Sweet, hold on, <laughs> wait. <laughs> so somebody can get ten thousand a hundred for hundred and fifty. Correct, yeah. And and name name all these watches. You this got is here. crazy, man. Okay, so this is the new presidential. This is the uh, the new rose gold twenty nineteen presidential forty millimeter. Rose Gold, let me see that. This is the Yacht Master. Wow. Two. This is the Yacht Master 2. I've seen this before. Is she talking to the mic? Oh, I'm sorry. So this is the Yacht Master 2. The number one seller is the presidential with the red face. Wow. With the big bezel. But lately, people have been wanting to get the little stones. So I got the same watch with the baby stones. Same wow. same size face. Let me see the baby stones. These are 41 millimeter, my bad. This is just like your watch. Yeah. And if you really want to keep it humble and believable, the date does it for you. But see, Raheem, let me ask you a question. Do you, uh, like with these watches, right? He eat more than the regular jewelers. So you're selling more watches than like jewelers? I think I sell way more watches than the regular jewelers. So you're responsible for a lot of relationships out here, like a lot of dudes meeting girls. I'll put this out there. I sell fake boxes to a jeweler somewhere in Philadelphia, but I can't say who. You sell fake what? Boxes. The, the, the Rolex boxes, I sell fake boxes to a jeweler. Oh, my God. Now, now, I don't know what he does with them, but... Now, hold up, hold up. I see you have this luxury bag. I make money off of boxes, too. Is, is this luxury bag real? No, that's, that's a replica. This, this Louis bag is fake, too. But so, <clears throat> if you see, the pattern is exactly like the real one. Everything is centered. So you just you just the boot you just got the whole bootleg kit, huh? The measurements, all the same. So you just sell all fake stuff. Yep. This is this is this is amazing. It smells though. It smells like leather. Give it away. Mm -hmm. It smells like the bag you had. No, the fucking don't. It smells just like your. Uh... My bag came from Louis Vuitton. Smell. Not Louis. Not him Vuitton. That motherfucker came from Louis Vuitton. <laughs> <laughs> My bag came from Lewis. <laughs> but this is the thing, Louis. So how many DMs you get it like a day? Uh man. It's it's pop right now. It says ninety nine plus. I can't even I can't even tell. It just said ninety nine plus. Let me see your DM. Pull it up. I want to see your DM. Because I gotta show people this. Like this is this is like crazy. And you know, you go you go his his page is damn. This is unbelievable. I've been working on it. Oh. So it might be a little bit lower because I replied to a bunch. Once you ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho. Let me read this one thing. Dude, clapping at eight. Listen. He said, listen. He said it went through. He clapping. Dope. 
Just got it on there. Thanks, bro. Thank you. No problem. Once you ship it off, can you send me the tracking info? This is this is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. Once you ship it off, could you send me the tracking info? So oh. that means so you just so so tell us some of the rappers you, you yo, service. Oh, oh, oh. Look, 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 come here. Look at the tracking info. He said, ship. In the next hour, I'll have tracking. He sent me tracking. Tracking. Yeah. And, and, and you know I always do two things. He said, no, no, but look what he said. You get anything else new? <laughs> so, so, so before we get out of here, we just want to know so, so who, who's some of the rappers you service? Damn, you got 18,000 followers. Honestly, I would love to say, but honestly, I would No, like no, don't say. Don't say nothing. Don't, I don't, don't want to lose any customers. Don't get Gil. No, we're not going to let Gil get was you. Soldier Boy, anything. one of them? He was definitely one, but that's how he got there. I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not backing. I'm not sanctioning that. I'm not saying enough. I'm just saying I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't advise you. He did say something about that, but that's. Don't say nothing else, Raheem. Right, no please. All don't right. say no names. But yeah, he was definitely one. Okay. You probably seen this one on his wrist. Whoa! Is this Whoa. the one? Oh, that's, that's the one we probably seen on his wrist. The, yeah, the yeah, Richard. He got, yeah, he got the orange one. Mm. Okay. So if Soldier Boy cops off you, why everybody why else shouldn't Gil? <laughs> why shouldn't why should Gil cop off you? you fucking, Soldier Boy just killed last year. Yeah. He had the biggest comeback. Uh, so did Raheem because of Soldier Boy. <laughs> Raheem had an awesome comeback. Soldier Boy. Raheem, I just want to say this, man. Like you know, you're doing your thing. Where do they find you at, Raheem? Uh, you can find me on my Instagram at Raheem the Jeweler. Damn. And um. You guys put that on the editing. <laughs> well, you trying to nigga, you trying to sell another thirty you watches to tomorrow. Huh? Like, <laughs> on us. He gonna crash this thing. I'm fucking talk about what we gonna do on our editing because yeah. Raheem the Jew. Yeah. You put that up at yeah, the bottom ready, of the he's screen. He's ready to crush the Fuck game, man. Well, listen, listen, man. I'm Wallow Two Six Seven. This is Gilly the King. We got Raheem the Jeweler here today. This is million dollars worth of game. The fake is the new real edition. Right. He's he's uh, Gilly, the fake watch wear. I know that watch fit, Gil. I know your watch fit. Let me tell you something. You, I know I, you got a Raheem all, I kit. Was the, I was the one who invented the Diamond Tester Challenge. And that's a, that's smart. You invent that so nobody thinks they're going to test your joint because you uh, run around I, I, with, I tested my shit first. You tested a watch that was in the store. The store owned that store. That watch. That wasn't your watch. <laughs> that was good. That was clever thinking. I think you wear fake jewelry. That's just me. <laughs> well, well. Um, you already tested mine. You tested mine, cuz. Oh, uh, I tested your W. Yeah, you did. So, okay, that's, I that's did. You did. So you can't get me with that, but I know I, I want to test your stuff. You know? But Raheem, we appreciate you, man. And it, and it, uh, to all the women out there that's getting gaffled because they're fascinated with shiny things, I feel sorry for you. You know what I mean? Step your game up. Start walking around with testers. But one of these things to light up a club. It looked like special effects in a club at nighttime. All right. Then at the end of the day, lady, don't be don't be running around here putting extra miles on your hind to accord for a fake Roly. A fake Roly. The Roly boy. You got a nigga out here putting extra miles on your. On your Maserati. Once again, man, we got to get out of here, man. I'm Wallow267. This is... This is Gilly the King. A.K.A. The Nut. This is me and Osworth for Game. We appreciate y'all for tuning in each and every week. We love y'all. It's, it's just like that. Right.